Hello and welcome to this Webbox talk on Website Mastery, the secret to exceeding 98% of your competitors. Just a very quick intro to myself. I'm Sean. I'm Growth Director here at Webbox. Uh, we are a digital agency that specialize in UX design, bespoke web development and performance marketing. Um, I've been in the industry for about 15 years now. I started off as a developer myself and have kind of worked through all different aspects of uh, website project delivery. Um, if you'd like to connect with me, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to make new connections. Um, and yeah, if there's any questions based on um, this content or anything else, then I'm happy to answer those for you. So let's get started. So what we're going to be looking at today are specific website blocks, website elements that you can put on your site to ensure that you guide your user through your content and so they can understand your business in a, in a great level of detail. Uh, this will also help increase the conversion level because what we're going to do is um, build on each element so that they uh, ultimately guides them through to the, that conversion um, place. Uh, so this is why not only these blocks are important, but also the formula that we use or the order that they go on um, is very important because each one is going to lead on to the next, building up a case uh, and trust in your business as to why you are the person to use. And we're going to have a look at some examples of how you can implement these. Uh, and we're also going to look at some additional functionality that you can put in place to take these to the next level. Um, so that might even get you up into that kind of 1% uh, above your competitors. And this will create a better user experience for your users and again, help, uh, help keep them satisfied when they're using your website. So analogy time. So we're going to kick off. Uh, if you ever you know, spoke to me before, if you know me or watched any of my videos before, you know that I love an analogy, especially when talking about kind of websites or marketing, um, marketing techniques as well. So uh, what we're going to look at today is the analogy is a physical retail store. They're a global um, organization. They have huge stores, lots of them throughout the UK as well, um, and they take users on a journey through their store. So they don't have a very typical um, kind of aisle layout. Uh, you might be guessing what it is. If I say meatballs, that might also uh, trigger something for you, but it is IKEA. So, um, you know, love or, love or hate IKEA, they have a very specific way that they lay out their shops, that they take their customers through a journey when they come and visit and uh, ultimately look at their products to, to purchase. Um, and what they do, you know, you, if you've been to Ikea, you'll have come across this. When you enter the store, you then go from department to department, um, working through this kind of maze-like uh, layout where you see all the products in, a, in their kind of natural habitat. Um, and this is also this kind of journey that they take you on is also very important from a website perspective as well. If you're interested in digging more into user journeys, then I actually did a, uh, a presentation on this previously last year, uh, which is how to plan and optimize your website user journey. Now you can access it through that QR code in the top right hand side there. Um, you can also access it through our website. Um, so please go and take a look at that and it will give you some um, bit more detailed uh, information on, on how you can do that. Um, and what, what, what IKEA, back to IKEA, what they do here as well is because they're showing the products in a natural environment, it gives you ideas of how you can actually use these products. So if you see a kind of utensil organizer in your kitchen uh, or for a kitchen, you don't necessarily think, oh, you know, that that'll be really good for me. That'll fit in the drawer. That'll go on the side nicely. But when you see it in the actual natural environment, you think, oh, yeah, that would work really well. It'll fit in. It'll, it'll give me the light I need. It will um, help organize these things that I've got in, you know, that are messy in my back room or wherever it might be. Um, but actually, interestingly, IKEA moved away from this kind of shop layout that they've they've um, you know become known for. Uh, they actually went back to a you know a traditional aisled um, uh, a sort of uh, retail store with products just on shelves, and ultimately it failed. So people wanted it back, and when they brought it back, they found that people spent more time in the shops, they bought more products, and they left happier customers. And again, this is exactly the same for your website. You want to make sure your website, whether you're selling products or services, has a clear user journey from A to B um, and that each section builds on the next. So you're, um, you know, you're guiding your user through that experience and, and um, taking them on that journey uh, with you. Now, these sections that we're going to look at, um, there are eight sections that are going to we're going to touch on today through our uh, through this presentation, um, and like I say, the order of these are important. You may be able to sort of tweak and change these, um, but that will be very much on a case by case basis. Um, and generally, some of these you know will need to stay in the exact order that they are in. The other thing to note with this is that we are going to be focusing on your homepage. 
Um, the reason for this is that most users land on a website through a homepage. So you may get the, you know, a, a, a section of users that come you know, through search, they land on a blog post or they've come through an ad to a landing page, but generally people will find you through your homepage. The other thing with the homepage is that it's, it's basically an amalgamation of your whole website. So all of the extra detail that you go into on your textual pages and your service pages and your contact page and, and you know, about us page, um, that all gets put in a, a succinct way on your homepage. So it's essentially a, a whole overview of you as a business, um, which is where these eight sections um, come into play. And you can create that story for your user so they can understand um, you as a business and learn more about you. So the first section we're gonna look at, taking this back again with our analogy to Ikea. The first thing you see when you go into Ikea is a, is a big entrance display. So as soon as you go through that door, you're not even up into the departments yet. Um, you see a display, you know, it could, be a, it could be a table, it could be shelving, it could be a um, Christmas display, it could be anything. But what it does uh, by, by adding this there, they draw you in, they grab your attention. And again, they're, they're immediately showing you kind of their key values and their proposition. Um, you can see their products, it, it, it gets you into that store. Now, that uh, similar to a website, that brings us to our hero section. So, you know, most people watching this will have come across the hero section on your website before. And within the hero section, there are three key parts to focus on. So you want to talk about what you do. Um, this can be like a nice big header at the top, um, and it should really stand out and, again, be succinct. It's your proposition. It should be super duper clear um, for the user. As soon as they hit that web page, they understand um, what you offer as a business. <laughs> <coughs> excuse me um, you need to talk about why it matters so going along with what you do uh, you want to add uh, you know a kind of small summary uh, maybe you know one or two sentences that talk about what it is that again you know by doing this uh, what it is that you can uh, your users and your customers can achieve by uh, interacting with you as a business and you want to show how to get started. So once they've you know, understood what your proposition is and why that matters, um, they need a very easy, quick way to, to get started in the process. Now, um, I came across this uh, Motion website, which is an AI tool which helps you kind of like plan your calendar. Um, and it's a really good example of, um, of these three things. So it's what they do. They use AI to plan your work, uh, to plan your work automatically. They've got why it matters. So that sub um, text underneath the, the title says be 137% more productive. Um, so again, it gives you that benefit. You understand uh, why you should be using this tool. And then how to get started. There's a really big clear call to action there. They don't have multiple call to actions. They don't have slides here. They don't have all sorts of different things that are confusing the user. They have that one call to action, try motion for free. You click on that button and you go through and start the process. Then as a bonus element in the hero section, one thing you can do again to take this up to another level is personalization. Now personalization is something that uh, you know a lot of people talk about. It goes along sort of hand in hand with AI. And there are a lot of different ways that you can um, implement personalization as well through the website. So there are full on tools, things like Personize that you can use that have a whole suite of different um, kind of uh, features and tools that you can put in place. But one really simple way of doing this um, is just to uh, drop a cookie onto someone's machine when they visit your site. So you know that that person has come to the website before, obviously, if they're accepting, uh, accepting cookies, but you know they've come to the site before. Um, and when they come back to the website again, then you can know it's maybe their third, you know, second, third visit. So that initial um, message and call to action on the homepage in the hero section might be something that's softer. So it might be, you know, find out more about us, explore our services, um, uh, download a, a white paper or sign up to a webinar. It could be something a bit softer. And then as you know, they've come back, there's more intent there. This is the second, third visit. Then you can change that to be more, you know, get in touch, book a meeting, um, you know, buy, buy our product or view our product. So you can, you can, again, personalize it, tailor that experience based on um, the user's uh, experience and, and uh, sort of um, interaction with you uh, on your website. So this brings us into section two. Again, uh, in IKEA, as we're you know navigating around, we'll get to sections where there are lots of kind of shelving storage areas, and they're all built up that you can see them um, in action. And the the reason for this in IKEA again isn't just to show the products off, but it's to give you ideas on how you can use them. So you might think, oh, look, I can pair that product with that. I would be able to organize these things and in, in, in a better way. Um, and again, it just kind of inspires the the, the customers um, to 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 think about what. They can actually do and benefit from uh, from their products 
So this brings us on to section two of the website, which is the problem section. So um, in the problem section, you ultimately want to talk about the problems that you solve with your service or product. Um, this could be something really specific, or it could be a range of different problems um, that you solve. And ultimately, you know, if there are quite a lot of different problems that you solve, it might be that you hone in on the most common problem. So uh, based on your past experience, on past customers and clients that you've worked with, um, understand you know, what, are the, what are the things that pop up more regularly, what are the ones that have the most emotional impact. So make sure you're using these emotional factors because people buy based on emotion. Really lean into it, into that. Focus on the real pain points that people experience. Um, and uh, yeah, again, you're, you're kind of like drilling into, you understand what it is that you can, um, that your customer's going through that you can help resolve. Um, and a bonus tip for this is to uh, utilize landing pages through this. So landing pages are a great element to have on your website. And I actually did a talk on this um, sort of earlier on this year as well. So you can find that through our website. But uh, essentially, you can create landing pages based on these kind of pain points and the solutions that you offer. And on a landing page, you can create a very specific um, sort of content piece, a very specific experience for the user. Um, so you can create this, get all the information around the problem, the solution, the product or service it is that they relate to, um, have a call to action on there, whether it's get in touch or you know book a meeting um, and, and help, again, ultimately drive those conversions. Um, another great way, obviously, of getting people to these landing pages is through using performance marketing. So you could use ads that target these kind of, um, what, what people are searching for or uh, your target audience and get them to these landing pages to understand how you can kind of help them uh, as, a, as an organization. That brings us then on to number three. So we've highlighted all the problems um, that we solve and you've kind of got into that emotional aspect with the customer. Now we want to release that tension with the solution section. So in the solution section, um, this is where, uh, you know, we've showed all those problems that we can solve. So then we're going to highlight our expertise in terms of how we actually solve those. So um, this can be quite a simple kind of like short text area on, on the page where you talk about your experience in the area, talk about your expertise, talk about why you are the right uh, people to buy from for your service or product um, and what makes you stand out from your uh, competition. That then quickly leads us into um, section four. So again, moving back to IKEA, um, I'm sure you know as we've all been going around uh, those those kind of many aisles and different departments, uh, we you know dodging prams, dodging crying children. Uh, you get to a point where you see these shortcuts. Now these can either be kind of like short aisles between different departments, or they can literally be uh, sort of like a not hidden but a door that goes through um, and and cuts out uh, several of the departments that you go through. So. Again, the reason that IKEA do this is to cater for buyers that know what they want. They can either pick up what they need or they can skip through to the, um, the further parts. They don't need to look at the kitchen areas and the bed areas because they want some shelving and uh, you know, a pot plant or whatever it might be. So they can, get, they can get through more quickly, get to the checkout into that buying, uh, buying area. So section four on our website, this just brings us to the services section. So in the services section, this is where we're highlighting our services. You'll want to showcase your main services or products. Um, obviously, if it's a service-based, then uh, if you've got a lot of services, again, it might be that you highlight the, the kind of main services that people come to you for. Um, and if it's if you're product-based, if you've got lots and lots of products, it could be here that you're kind of highlighting offers or highlighting um, the, the sort of you know the, the, the key products that you want um, or that you know people kind of uh, come to you for. Um, and essentially, you're listing these out, giving a bit of information about each of them and adding uh, a link to the detail page. So this, again, is a shortcut for users. So if they either have come back to the website after uh, they've interacted with you as a business once or if they've you know, re even read that first bit of content and they think, yeah, I want to find out a bit more about this, it's a shortcut for users to get to that detail about the product or service um, so they can yeah, easily navigate and get through to that buy-in uh, buy um, process quicker. Um, an example of this is just from this um, spa website that I came across. So they've got their services listed out in a quite nice, simple uh, grid layout. Uh, the the imagery, the title, there's a bit of a summary, and then a link through to the um, to the content. And the image and the title just makes it really you know clear and easy what what each section is. Um, and again, you can link through nice and easily to get to the detail page of um, of each of these sections. It doesn't need to be complicated. It should be nice and clear and easy for the user to navigate. Uh, as a bonus tip for this section, 
one thing you can do is sell solutions. So instead of your services or products, um, you know, people know what they want, but they might not know necessarily the service that is required for that. So it could be that, you know, they're trying to increase leads or they're trying to increase uh, kind of user engagement or satisfaction. And through that, they don't know that they necessarily need performance marketing or a uh, kind of UX review or what, whatever that might be. Um, so if you can sell the solution and talk about, um, you know, what it is that the a final outcome is um, and, the product, and the product or service that is related to that, that's just another way to kind of wrap up and package your, um, your services and products uh, that it might be more understandable for your users. That then brings us into uh, section five. So section five is our benefits section. So again, IKEA does this um, very well, and they do something very clever, which we've, we've touched on previously, um, which is by having all their products out, having you able to go and sit on them, pick them up, open the drawers, touch them, um, and, and kind of ultimately get you know the the, the kind of uh, the physical feeling of them. Um, you get this psychological effect where when you kind of touch products and, and interact with them, uh, you're more likely to to buy them. Essentially, I know you know if we can't do that on a website, unfortunately, that might be uh, something for. 10, 20 years down the future when we've got VR and kind of haptic feedback, however it might be. But um, ultimately, you can imagine how this fits into your life. You can see the benefits that it's given you. Um, next up, I came across this image when I was looking for this, which I thought was quite funny, whereas this man is just asleep on one of the IKEA sofas. Um, what it actually turned out is that uh, in China, in the Chinese market, they actually told their customers to come in and sleep on their sofas, sleep on their beds, and try them out before they buy them, essentially. So um, that wasn't even just like a quick nap either. It was like come in and sleep here for a while. Um, and also this next image came up, which I hope they didn't find out the hard way, but the toilets have this sign in. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just praying that nobody actually uh, used, uh, used the toilet in Ikea, and then they had to put this um, sign in retrospectively, but um, you never know. So then uh, this section five is our benefits section. So much like IKEA, we're using the same technique, which is what is the user going to gain from your service or product? Um, essentially, you know, what is it they're going to get? Are they going to save time and effort? Are they going to save money? Are they going to be healthier or less stressed? Um, by highlighting these things that the user is going to benefit from, you're selling it and convincing them that you, they, they should purchase your product or service. Um, and this is the detail that it, you know, it sells it to that customer. Um, so one uh, extra bonus for this section as well is that um, to, again, enhance this a bit further, you could offer a free trial. So if you maybe are a SaaS service, um, you know, you, a bit, bit like Motion that we saw earlier, you could offer a, you know, a seven day free trial so someone can experience those benefits before they then um, kind of make the final purchase. Uh, if, if it's something product related or more uh, physical, it could be sort of carpet sales. You could send out a sample so someone can try that before they buy. And that brings us on to section uh, number six. So section six is our process section. Now, uh, the process, se process section has a really important um, job because it essentially erases confusion for um, your customers. So no, no confused customer will ever buy anything um, from, from anyone. And this is where we're going to kind of like take away that doubt so that they know what to expect when they interact with you as a business. Um, and again, IKEA do this in a really good way. So, um, you know, you can have, have a think for a second, but what is something that IKEA supply with every piece of furniture that you buy? So whether it's a, you know, a set of drawers or a table or a chair, whatever it might be, they always provide you with an instruction manual and an Allen key. So everyone will probably come across these, you know, you might have 15 of these Allen keys um, at your home currently. Uh, but what this does is it explains the process and guides the customer um, through how they build their product. And, and it, again, it makes it sort of easy. Well, I say easy. I'm, I know I've wrestled with a few pieces of furniture from Ikea, but it should make the process easy and they know what to expect. They know the steps they need to take. Um, as a bonus, there is actually an added uh, psychological effect here. It's actually called the IKEA effect, where people place a higher value on things we help to create. So, you know, I was, I was thinking about this um, uh, with, with Will, Will recently, but maybe if we can get people to build their own websites, then uh, then um, they'll, they'll uh, have a higher value uh, attached to them. But, you know, again, it's something in the kind of physical world, but it's just something to, to consider there from an interesting psychological effect as well. So what we're doing in the process section 
we're outlining the interactions that the the customer is going to have with you as a business. Now, obviously, if that's maybe service related, it could be meetings, it could be a proposal, it could be um, someone comes to visit you, it could be all sorts of different things that go through that process um, when they when they use your service. If you're product related, you know, it could be from purchase, um, what the delivery kind of looks like, what the feedback section looks like, what warranty looks like, all these kind of things that um, the, the user will, will interact with to understand, um, you know, what, what, what they're going to get when they when they make a purchase with you um, and as a bonus for this section one thing you can do is use interactive storytelling so this instead of just laying out this process in kind of like a text list format which can be you know a bit maybe a bit boring um, it can just be a bit more an engaging way to uh, present this content so interactive storytelling is essentially using kind of animated objects um, and uh, you know maybe as someone scrolls down the page different elements fade in you can use imagery you can use um different kind of shapes and design elements to to again just add a bit more um a bit more interest behind that content um and you, you could even you know play out if it is the kind of delivery process you could play that out through kind of an animation or some some way just to um just to explain that to the user so it's a bit more um, interesting this then brings us on to section seven. So section seven is very important as well. It is the social proof section. So for social proof section, most of you might immediately be thinking um, testimonials, and these are the obvious things that you want to have in place um, on your website. So you know we're talking about past success. We're talking about customers that we've served um, and are ultimately happy with uh, what we've delivered. Um, and you know, again, relating this back to IKEA, I'm sure most people, if you've been to IKEA before and you're watching this, you will have been on a weekend. So you may have experienced things like this. So there are just hordes of people, lots of people go into IKEA, which you know can be quite annoying because it gets very busy. But it also has another effect, which is when you're moving around the departments, when you're shopping and you're looking at the products, um, you, you get a sense of kind of confirmation bias about its popularity because you think, well, you know, there's tons of other people here. There's lots of other people looking at these products and buying these. So there must be some worth behind it. It adds a merit. It adds a weight to your shopping experience. Um, and you think, you know, if everyone else is shopping here, then it must be all right. So what you're doing through your testimonials on your website, you're showing your satisfied customers. Um, you're showing uh, who you've helped and you've had the, this kind of positive effect on. Um, and also you're proving that you can deliver on the previous sections that we've been through. You know, you've talked about the pain points, you've talked about your solutions and your services, and now you're showing, you know, these people have benefited from this. And it, again, just, just kind of um, reiterates uh, your, your uh, legitimacy as a business. Um, and one bonus uh, element for this as bonus tip as well is two kind of things really. So uh, one is video. So video testimonials, you know, they can be a bit like Marmite. Some people love them, some people hate them. But it, it's, again, just taking it to the next level from text where you're seeing a customer um, talking about their experience. They're kind of emoting, you know, they're, they're, they're giving you a bit more um, of, a, of a human experience rather than just being a bit of text and an image. Um, but also one thing that I think a lot of people kind of miss is the linkage. So if you've got a testimonial on your homepage um, and it relates to a specific service or product, then make sure that you link to, through to that product or service detail because somebody might read that testimonial and think, wow, that person's had such a great experience. I want to find out more about what that service actually is or how I interact with that. So make sure you link through to it and then vice versa. If you've got a testimonial that links to a product or service, make sure that testimonial or that review or whatever it you, however you want to name it, um, is on that page as well. So you get that whole kind of full circle um, linking aspect between the content, so people can um, access access both quite easily. And then last but not least, this brings us on to section eight. So now we've gone through all these other sections. We know what you do. We know the benefits of you doing it. We know how you do it. And we've seen all the happy people that you've done it with. Um, the final part of this puzzle is the practical elements. So again, in IKEA, we've all come across these labels. So we've you know, found the sofa. We found the table that we like. We looked at the shelves. We've uh, waited, sort of looked at the kitchen cabinets and all those kind of things. And then we've decided with our hearts, yeah, we want to buy these things. But ultimately you need the practical elements to work as well. So this is where you come to these labels, you look at things like the measurements, will it fit? Um, you look at, you know, um, kind of warranty elements, you look at, uh, you know, how much you can store in these things, whatever it might be, but you're looking at the very practical elements, the, the kind of um, different detail in, uh, in th this uh, product itself. So this leads us on the website into our features section. 
So the features section, you know, as we've said before, people buy it on emotion. So that is the initial driving force of what people want to do. But ultimately, the head and the heart need to need to agree and it needs to make sense in the head too. So this is where the practical factors come into place. So we want to list out all the practical factors of your offering um, and what is the customer getting through your service or product as well. This then backs up the emotional decision um, and it kind of locks in the customer. So this is where you're talking about um, you know, from this product, what, uh, you know, how long does it last? What's the battery life on it? Um, uh, you know, how do you care for it? What's the wash, wash, washing routine for it? Um, you know, all, all these kind of practical things that you want to list out. And the bonus tip for this, because I just talked about product there, is if you're service related, then it can be a bit difficult to think of like, well, what are the features? What are the practical elements of, of what happens when you, you interact with us? And ultimately, um, your team are the kind of the practical elements, the features behind what you're offering. So this is where you can really big up your team. So having a meet the team page, especially if you're service based and you're kind of you know face to face with customers, is really good uh, because people can ultimately see who they're going to be working with. They can understand again a bit more about your expertise as well. Um, so this is just a, a really good page to to make sure that you're again talking about your team, talking about uh, their their experiences. You can even link off to their kind of LinkedIn pages or give give a bit more of a kind of personal feel around um, who they are and, and um, yeah, how the how the team makeup works. So uh, in review, the, the kind of eight sections that we're talking through today are our hero section. So we want to make sure that we show uh, what we do, why we do it, and how to get started. It should be really clear straight away. Talk about the problems that we've solved, really dig into those pain points and get the emotional um, thoughts pro, uh, uh, sort of churning in the, in the customer. Talk about our solutions. So uh, why are we the people that they should, um, you know, should, should work with from a business perspective? Uh, what is our exp experience and expertise? Then talk about the services. So a quick shortcut, if somebody knows that they want to dig into that service in a bit more detail, they can quickly um, go, go away and do that. Obviously, if it's product related, then that can be kind of offers or, or your latest products as well. Then talk about the benefits. So, what is the customer actually going to gain um, from using you as a um, as a, a, a supplier, whether that's product or service? Again, um, this could be uh, the benefits of a product. It could also be the kind of afters of a uh, of a service that they they use from you. It could be you know fast delivery, whatever that might be. Talk about the process. So the, all the different interactions that the customer is going to have with you as an organization. Um, and, you know, again, from a product perspective, what that looks like from a kind of delivery or afters effect. Uh, social proof. So look at testimonials. Make sure that you're getting that full linking in place. Um, and if you can use video, then great. Um, you want to really back up your, uh, your, your kind of, again, your expertise and your um, service providing uh, through the testimonials. And then finally, the features. So all those practical elements. Um, what is the user gonna gonna actually get from these? Um, you know, again, how, how do they kind of um, look after these products? Look after these? Uh, how do the service look after them and these these kind of features? And if you uh, have all these on here, uh, use all these on your website. Obviously, this is again focus on the homepage, but you can uh, you can use this content throughout the website in different elements as well. Uh, you will ultimately end up with customers that are like this. They're nice and happy. Big thumbs up. Um, and they are, uh, yeah, they, they want to kind of interact with you and, uh, a bit more. Now, uh, I hope that was really useful. Um, and just as a, a kind of quick uh, summary at the end here, um, there are some more resources that we have available through our website. So um, please go on to the document section. You can find some of these tips. The website template, uh, brief template is very useful. And the GA4 guidance is one that um, lots of people want to, to kind of uh, interact with in a minute as well. Um, and also we offer free digital audits. So this is something that you may or may not have come across with us before, but we can we will audit a, a website or PPC um, campaigns for you. And our team will basically um, go away and have a look uh, into the website, whether it's uh, kind of UX design, uh, page speed, accessibility, these kind of elements. From a PPC perspective, it will be the structure of the, the kind of campaigns, the ads, who you're targeting, all these kind of things. And we'll put that together in a slide deck and come back to you with um, some suggestions. Um, and tips and how you can um, improve that. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you found that useful and um, I will hopefully see you soon.